Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another video. So the location for today's video is Shepherd's Crag, which is just above Lodore Falls in the Lake District National Park. Uh, it's not far away from the town of Keswick. Uh, this is a location I've seen in other people's photographs. So it's on my bucket list because I've seen some you know, reasonably good images up from up here. Now, what I'm finding today is, well, let me describe what, what we've got. So autumn is not quite here, which is a little bit frustrating, but that's, that's what we've got. It's coming. I'd say we're about halfway there, but we're not at the peak of autumn. We're also experiencing uh, frequent rain showers. It's the Lake District, right? And water's got to come from somewhere. But they're coming and going. So you'll get a rain shower, then you'll get a lull, then you'll get a rain shower, etc., etc. So conditions are a little bit challenging. And I'm really impressed that this Osmo is still going. But it is. I'm going <laughs> to keep persisting with it whilst it still works. This location, in these conditions right now, is it's really itching at me because I know, I know there's an image to be found up here, but I'm really, really, really having to search for it. Um, now, I also need to be very careful. Quite high up, there's uh, quite significant um, drops uh, around the edges. Uh, because we've had some rain, the surfaces of the rocks that are around here are very wet. So I need to avoid those like the plague. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to end up uh, on my backside or worse. But what I've done is I've put my bag down, got out my viewing aid, this thing here. Um, and I've, I've got a video about how I use this. Um, I'll, uh, I'll leave a link to it in the description below. Um, now, when I did the video about this viewing aid, uh, I had a number of people that said, you're wasting your time, you know, you can do that, you can use your phone. Yeah, okay, fine. But I think this separates me from the act of creating a photograph. So much so that I think it makes me think a little bit harder. Also, if I drop this, right, so what? It's a little bit of plastic. Don't get me wrong, I don't particularly want to pollute the environment with plastic. Cool. You only got wet hair and you get wind blowing through you. Wow. Um, yeah, I don't particularly want to pollute the environment with plastic, but if I drop my phone... Anyway, that's just personal choice, isn't it? So I've had a scoot around trying to challenge my mind to find compositions. Now, the one that caught my eye the most was this tree behind me here. But the problem I've got is that I can't separate it cleanly from what's going on all around it. Unless, of course, we get a rain shower that blows through. So in my head, I'm now waiting for a rain shower to blow through. In fact, I can feel um, a drizzle on my face. So maybe, maybe. Um, and what I'm going to try and do, I won't be able to do it for all the compositions that I've found, but I'll sort of, you know, put this camera looking at the viewfinder and try and talk you through uh, what's going on uh, in order to explain the process and uh, so on and so forth. I'm not quite sure which one's going to work just yet, but I'm pretty sure one of them will work. And as I've said on many occasions, every moment spent out of the landscape whether you, whether you come away with a portfolio image or not, it's not a waste of time because you always learn something. You always get the juices flowing about composition and light and exposure and blah, 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 blah. Um, so it's never a waste of time. So 20 minutes, half an hour up here, exploring some compositions is a great use of my time. Now, the rain seems to have eased again. So I'm going to leave this one. This one is probably going to be handheld um, because I'm going to need to act on it very, very quickly. So I would say uh, I'm going to work over there and uh, work the two or three compositions that I found uh, over here. And I shall take you with me. Let's go and explore. So this was my first 
composition. Uh, more about colour, really, the fact that autumn is on its way. Um, the wind has got up actually, which is a little bit of a pain. And I've been playing with this composition. Let me just get rid of all the gump that sits around it. So down here, I've got a, a clump of, I don't know whether it's, it's heather, I'm not sure, but I've got a sort of a purpley flower here. Then you've got all the bracken that's turned brown, small lump of gray, and then a tree that's coming out of the, appears to come out of the rock. And then there's two more trees here and they're leaning into the frame. Now, using the full viewfinder, um, I don't know, I, I think there's a lot of wasted space here on the left and here on the right, especially when the notion uh, of the image was one of colour. So I'm actually thinking, where's one by one? I'm actually thinking I might go for a square. Now if I go for a square, I'm having to alter the composition ever so slightly. Uh, the camera's moved, that's a bit of a pain. Let's move it, whoops, that way a little bit. And I'm sorry I can't, um, I, I can't make the picture any bigger, I can't get the video camera uh, closer to the screen. Uh, I just can't physically do it and hang on to the video camera and hang on to the uh, stills camera because it's, um, it really is very, very blowy. So I just artificially brighten the image. So what I'm just trying to do here is balance these two trees. This tree here has got a branch that goes off to the right hand side. Sorry, left hand side. Just need to be a bit careful of that. I don't want to lead the viewer's eye out of the frame. And these two trees here, they lean into the frame. I think that works okay. In terms of focus point, I think I'm going to focus on the bottom of the tree. I'm going to use autofocus because I'm lazy. I'm going to take the exposure right back down. Do I have a two second timer? No, I don't. That's because I was hand holding yesterday. Two second timer, F8, 50th of a second, ISO 200. I think that that's a good summary of the, the, the colour emerging that we can see right now. Now, as I've stood here, I've wondered whether there's another composition using the whole tree. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move the video camera. But what I will have to do is put the stills camera down on the floor because I really don't want the wind to tip it over. Just give me a second. You can cut this bit, Hugh. Uh, right, so there's our tree. Now, I'm not sure whether you can see that, but that's the top of the tree. Uh, where are we? No, other way. There. The sun has just started to peep through a gap in the clouds. And what I'm now getting is the sunlight on these um, birch tree uh, bark sides. And because the sun's come out, they're really, really standing out from the colour. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to get the top of the tree behind that fell. I don't want the sky. So I think what I'm going to have to do is probably lift the camera above my head uh, and look at the uh, flip out viewfinder and see whether I can do that. I'm thinking portrait as well, because I think the, the body of the colour, if you like, is like that. So whilst the sun's out, I'm just going to grab that really, really quickly. Okay, so this was composition number two, number three, whatever. <laughs> um, 
Now, this isn't working quite so well because, ah, there we go. That's a bit better because of the glare. Let me just position the video camera. There we go. Come across to the left ever so slightly. There we go, that's a little bit better, isn't it? You can actually see the picture. So the main subject is this tree here. Just get rid of all this gump. It's this tree right in the middle here. And it's shape suited portrait format. So that's fine. Um, the thing I don't like about it, and the two cameras are really close to each other, is, let me just move the camera. Come on, up you come. I don't know whether you can see that or not, but there is a tree in the background that's just sticking up. And yeah, I think it's died or dead or whatever. And I don't know, it just interferes because it comes right out of the top of my tree and I've artificially brightened the image by the way because then you can see it now you see now I've done that let's bring it forward a wee bit more oh now you see I hadn't spotted that now when I looked at this view it was the shape of the tree that caught my eye and I was zoomed right out if you remember when I started so that I had you know the rock the bracken and then the tree but just by doing, doing that, just focusing in on the tree and the shape of the tree. Excuse me a minute, I'm just playing compositionally. In fact, I think that's stronger because now the shape of the tree is what the image is really about. It was the shape of the tree that made me look in this direction and think, oh, I wonder. Now, let's get rid of all this gump. I think the tree needs to have space on the left because of these branches that are reaching out to the left. Now, it can't go too far because otherwise this tree here creeps in. So it needs to be just enough. So something like that, and the sun keeps trying to come out. So let me just choose my focus point. Again, I'm going to use autofocus because it's just the right thing to do right now. Something like that. Uh, where's the histogram? Let's have a quick look at the histogram. That's looking okay. I'm nice and level. Focus point is at the bottom of the tree. Sun's coming out. So that was f8, 40th of a second. Focus point was around about here. Histogram is ever so slightly towards the dark side, but I think I need to do that to retain the detail in the birch bark. Now, arguably not as strong, as the first tree but you know it's what's here ah and here comes the rain again i could see it in the distance right let's see if i can uh, grab this last one before the weather really really closes in on me Right, so this was going to be composition number three, but it's not happening for me. And remember, I think it's just as important to show you those things that do work as opposed to those that, that, that do or don't work as opposed to those ones that do. So forgive me, the camera keeps moving. I think it's because it's, uh, the wind is blowing. Uh, excuse the odd angle, but uh, because of the angle of this camera and the angle of the video camera, that's the best I can get it. So um, the stills camera is level um, and that was my view, which was going to be this collection of trees. Uh, it was the contrast between the brown bracken and the trees with a little bit of autumn color. And then I had this tree here with some branches that was just pointing into the frame a little bit. Um, now you could argue if I falsify it, and line everything up sort of like that it actually works better but then the trees themselves 
are on a slant and I think I mean it's a false it's a false image and I think you can tell it's false because of the angle of the trees so using the viewing aid that looked okay from here right now it, it doesn't so I'm going to scratch that one it's I don't know it's just not happening for me at all um, though now I've looked at it I'm actually looking back at the uh, original scene I've actually noticed this branch here let me just reposition that you know what I was saying earlier about what's the image all about it's about the shape of trees and that tree there the top of that tree has got a lovely shape to it sort of doing this on the fly get rid of all the information now you see I can't go too far out because otherwise this tree here creeps in so I think I need to go in a little bit tighter just allow the shape of that tree there on its own to have the voice so I'm now completely off level you see if I level the camera the stills camera back up move him back around go yeah I don't know it's sort of making the best of a bad job really but you know what pixels are cheap so I'm going to do it so you'll have noticed I've got stabilization switched on this symbol here that's because uh, the tripod is actually moving ever so slightly in the wind Gah! and it's got such a keen edge to it too right I'm just going to wait for the wind a little bit there we go let's just check that on the back of the camera yeah it's not too bad I think it's going to take a bit of work in post-processing but I'm going to give it a go so yeah might be might not be but you know it's one of those things you see something and you need to have the willingness to investigate it to see whether there is any potential there or not if there isn't there isn't I still like the idea behind it though it's something else that I'll try and keep rolling around in my head as I walk around these hills today so I think there's just one more composition to go for and I can see some cloud moving in behind me so I'm going to uh, wait for that cloud to move in and then see if I can get my last and final composition. Uh, so I've come down off the fell now um, it was just getting too windy uh, and too wet up there um, the tripod that holds the video camera that had already blown over twice um, and um, I wasn't going to test the resilience of my uh, Osmo uh, any further so um, quite challenging whether any of the images will actually work when I get them into software, I don't know. You will know because you've already seen them. But you know, do leave us a comment. Tell us what you think about the compositional process and also you know, the images that were, that were finally created. Um, remember for one moment though that uh, with modern technology, it is possible to take a sharp, reasonably well exposed image just using all the technology. Composition is the one thing that we all contribute as photographers. There's no software to do it for us. Not yet, of course. And I think I've said that before on previous videos. So I'm aware that I do lots of videos where I talk about 
composition and what's in the frame. But that's, that's really important because everybody's vision, everybody is drawn to different objects, different subjects. That's why you have landscapers and portrait photographers and um, uh, intimate object photographers and, and so on and so forth. If we didn't have that variety, I think photography would become very boring. Uh, so I'm really, really glad that we're all drawn to different things in different ways. And that's why I do a lot of videos that, that focus in, excuse the pun, on that kind of thing. So I hope it's been interesting. Um, I hope you've been able to get something from it. If you're not a subscriber, uh, please do consider subscribing. It's free. You can unsubscribe at any time. And if you do subscribe, click on the bell button alongside the subscribe and then from the list of three options select all and then you'll get notified as to when I upload new content and if you've liked this video please do give it a thumbs up it does help the channel helps its visibility and helps to create a community of like-minded people all uh, commenting and cont contributing uh, and it also helps the whole YouTube community as well so thanks again for watching until the next one stay safe and stay well keep exploring with your camera I'm off to my next location and I shall see you again soon. Bye-bye. Cheers for now. I wish it would stop raining. Yeah.